We are making wicking tubs today. I've got all my uh, protein tubs, syrup tubs, and I've got a bunch of corrugated pipe, and I've got a bunch of black pipe. I, I, I just like the look of the black sticking up more so than I do the white PVC, and that's what I had. I had a big roll of that laying around, so it didn't cost me anything. I'm cutting up right now, in the process, cutting those uh, corrugated pipe up. Let me show you how to do that. So I made a little block that's three inches. I set it down, put the drill right there. So the bottom of the hole is three inches. Bottom of the hole is at three inches. And I drill it. I'm gonna try to do this without getting my big head in the way, but let me tell you what I'm gonna do first. I've got the ground cover, and this is a very good commercial ground cover I bought at a wholesale nursery. This is what they put on the floors of their um, greenhouses. We've got 20, 30, 40 greenhouses. Uh, last, uh, Mr. Leon says it'll last 15, 20 years. So the stuff you buy at the store will not. It will last a year or two. So try to get a good commercial ground cover. So what I try to do is center it here. It's got some stripes on it. As you can see, the 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 uh, uh, pipes are laying this way. Here's my hole. The pipes facing your hole. I also marked it on top here with a little marks a lot. That's where my hole is going to be. That's where my pipe should be running. And what I'll do is put it on here. It's got some stripes on it. I'll center those stripes this way, and then I'll grab it here and try to pull it to where I feel it's even here. In other words, it's, it's per perfectly centered with this. I'll pinch it, push it down in here. You wanna go down in these wells right here. This is your wicking wells right here. That's where the water's gonna wick from. So I'll pinch it here once I've got it centered. Pinch it, go down with it. Try not to get my head in the way. This is four feet long. Four feet this way, the ground cover itself is three feet wide and I've got a four foot piece of it. All right, so it's level there. There's the edges, it's about centered. Edge there, edge there, there's my stripes. All right, so I'm gonna come up here and pinch it. And then just go straight down with it. Down in those wells. Down in those wells. Now, obviously this is square, bug it's round, nothing fits right. So that's the way it's gonna look. It's not gonna look great yet. Get it down in there, and then we'll pour our soil in. This is where it gets a little tricky, because if you get a little sloppy with your soil, you can get your soil down here in the back side of it. You want your soil to be right in the middle. I'm not doing mine with a shovel, I'm doing mine with bags. I'll fill it up halfway with the soil. Make sure you get it down in those wells. And make sure Take one more look at your hole and make sure your pipe is centered. This is the time to do it. Turn your pipes a little bit if you need to, okay? This is where my hole is, where I marked it. I want my pipe running perpendicular to the hole. All right, so I got that. At this point, put the fertilizer in. Now here's where I'm doing something a little different from Mr. Leon. Um, talked to him on the phone. Super, super, super nice guy. Uh, can't believe he gave his phone number. I'm not going to give mine out. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I'm, I'm fertilizing this like the earth box is fertilized. And what they do, 
about halfway up, they spread dolomite lime, and then they go the rest of the way, and then they put your fertilizer on top. They cut that little groove. You've probably seen them do it. Little groove in it, put the fertilizer on top when it's full. So this, at this point, is what I'm doing is putting uh, dolomite lime in it. Uh, right here is where Leon would do um, uh, sea mineral, sustain, uh, Epsom salt, and something else. I'm forgetting something. And it wouldn't hurt for everybody to put Epsom salt in them. Either when you plant or down in the bottom, wherever. That'll keep you from having that blossom end rot, which you can get on your tomatoes, but you can also get it on your peppers, too. So at this point, I'm putting a pound. This is what Earthbox does. They put a pound of lime in it. So instead of weighing out a pound, I just got a little coffee can and marked off where lime was, a pound of lime was. And I'm pouring it in there, mixing it in. The rest of the soil goes right on top. And I say soil, this is not soil, this is potting mix. Now these orange tubs are gonna have trees in it. These are gonna be my fruit tree tubs. Blue tubs are gonna be my blackberry tubs. And yes, this is poking up. You may not want to, look, want to see that, so just bend that down. And finish putting your soil in. You'll never see it, especially if you put a cover over it. Uh, I'm not gonna fill this up because I don't know how big a, if I'm getting a five gallon tree, when I go to plant that, I'm gonna have to pull a lot of that soil out to get that five gallon tree down in there. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Something I did not do. And do as I say do, not as I do, is I did not put fill tube in. You gotta have fill tube. Do that without getting a bunch of soil down in it. The top of the water fill tube can be flat, but the bottom of it needs to be cut at a bevel. That's about a 45 degree angle. The reason being, if this, move this out of the way, if this fill tube is down on the bottom, if it's squared off to the bottom, it might not let any water out. But if it is, it's got a bevel on it, an angle to it, then the water can come out. It won't seal it off. All right. That is a wicking tub. And if you don't know what these, these are syrup tubs. We call them syrup tubs around here. They're actually protein tubs. It's protein you give uh, livestock, cows, horses, whatever, that has a molasses base to it. So that's why we call them syrup tubs. I really, really like these orange ones. They're a little shorter than the blue ones, but they're a little bigger around. Same volume, I think they're 20 gallon. Got the hole in it, got the cloth in it, dolomite in it. Most of you know what a wicking tub is. The pipes in the bottom, this one right here. The pipes in the bottom hold the water. You've got that, that hole at three inches. These are four inch pipes. Uh, Leon uses six, but he does it mainly because he doesn't want to water his off and that six will hold more water, six inch pipe. Six inch pipe is expensive and it's hard to find. You have to special order it at Lowe's and stuff. So. I, when I called him and talked to him, he said, man, I've used four inch, four inch for years before I went to six. So four inch is fine. He said, you're just going to have to maybe water a little more often because it's not going to, it's not going to hold as much water. So the water will come in here through that pipe, through this pipe right here, and you'll put the pipe beside, uh, you know, right in here on either side of this. 
Your hole is gonna be down here at three inches. This is four inch pipe, three inch hole. You want that one inch of head space, air space, that's going to uh, air prune your roots. That's what this is all about. It works on the same principle as the earth box, which has a one inch air space between the water and the top of the soil, except for the two little wicking wells. And this is your wicking wells here. Down here is where the water comes from, your wicking wells. So anyway, that's what it looks like before. That's what it looks like after. And uh, we've been, uh, maybe I can do a little swing here. We've been busy. <laughs> We've been busy. And that is the mix I use, by the way. It's called BM7. It comes in a three cubic foot bag. And just for information purposes, uh, a blue tub will take about three quarters of a bag of the BM7. And these here are gonna be, um, gonna, Probably, it's probably the same volume, like I said before. So, uh, we're making a heck of a lot of tabs, people. <laughs> All right, I got, uh, that's the first one of the orange ones. I got nine more to go. That's gonna be fruit trees. Probably mostly fig. I may have one orange. I found an orange that'll grow here. And most everything else is gonna be fig, I think. And I'm gonna have a lot of different kinds of food, uh, fig trees to share with you in the coming weeks and years, I hope. All right, I think I've showed you everything I know, Dad Gummit. Didn't take long, didn't it? <laughs> it doesn't take long for me to tell somebody everything I know. I think we're gone.